Customization is a very powerful tool when it comes to gaming. As great as it may be to experience something in the default way, we tend to build deeper connections to games when we have the ability to change things to our specific liking. And that's part of why I'm drawn to something like TF2, a game where customization is part of its core identity. From the utterly insane amount of cosmetics and weapon skins, to even more specific ways of distinguishing yourself like paints, killstreaks, unusual effects, and so on, and that's just content that is officially supported through updates. By all means, you can certainly take customization a step further by installing custom content like hit sounds, HUDs, and full-on cosmetic mods just to make your experience that little bit more unique. But admittedly, there are going to be problems that will arise from such a powerful tool. You know, if you give everyone the freedom to customize things, you're bound to witness some form of abuse. Because regardless of the game, people are gonna see what they're able to get away with. And unfortunately, we've seen this a lot in the form of item names with slurs or otherwise offensive terms being plastered onto players' screens completely uncensored. And if that wasn't bad enough, there is literally an item that you can spend real-world money on that announces to everyone playing the game a specific message, which if you can believe, has also led to some unsavory things being said. But while these things can be abused via text, they just simply do not come anywhere close to another means of customization, one that has had quite a few problems associated with it that have been left unattended since their addition nearly 12 years ago. And that means a customization would have to be custom decals, or as I would like to call it, TF2's biggest mistake. So, what exactly are custom decals? Well, to put it simply, custom decals are essentially just images that you're able to put onto a select few items that support the feature through an item called the decal tool. And these images that you're applying, regardless of their initial resolution, are shrunk down to the relatively small size of 128 by 128 pixels. But even for such a small resolution, this space manages to display quite a lot of information, especially if it's paired with something like the conscientious to Subjector, aka the item with the most visible spot for custom decals. And admittedly, this already sounds like it would be a very bad idea. Luckily, all decals when they are being applied are required to have a filter that restricts them to a very limited amount of usable colors. Well, at least they're supposed to. You see, regardless of this attempt to stylize these decals by limiting their colors, it is incredibly common knowledge that with some very basic efforts, you're able to completely bypass the use of this filter, allowing for your decals to display in full color. And if you want to do this yourself, it should go without saying that there are plenty of guides out there, with some using incredibly basic things like paint. But when it comes to the use of full color decals, my thoughts are pretty complicated. On one hand, I see a lot of value in having access to full color for this kind of thing. Not just because most decals look like complete ass with the intended style, but also because there are a lot of good uses for full color decals. And I know for a fact that a majority of people people do use decals in a respectful way. Hell, I have a sign just to piss off soldiers for blindly jumping at me and dying to a reflex. But as much as I can give credit to the positives of full color decals, I feel like the mere existence of them has caused most of the problems that decals are known for. But before I get into these issues, I think it would be best to look at a very similar feature in TF2's history. Now, if you're a relatively newer player, you may not be aware of what sprays actually are. And that's because, by default, the only way you would even know that sprays exist is from the options menu. And even then, it's in a spot that is very easily overlooked. Other than that, unless you change a couple settings, sprays are essentially disabled for the average player. So, what caused sprays to become a relic of the past? Back in the days before casual servers, sprays were actually very commonly used in pubs. You would regularly see people use them to share memes or random ass images for people to look at, but you also had people using this feature in much more creative ways. From stuff like the famous teleporter priority spray, to much more interesting uses for the feature as shown by Nate Fox. But as much as there were positive uses for sprays, you still had those bad eggs who used them to share offensive material, not safe for work content, and things that I would rather not mention by name. This on its own is pretty bad enough, but unfortunately it does not end there. You 
see, every single spray that you see in matches at TF2 are actually saved locally into a specific folder, which paired with this foul and potentially even illegal material becomes quite the liability, so much so that Valve actually stepped in to tackle this issue head on. First and foremost, they disabled sprays for all users, but since the major issue was that the contents were being stored locally, they also made it so that when you close TF2, the sprays that you did have saved were wiped clean. And of course, in typical Valve fashion, these changes are optional and can be disabled with relative ease. But nonetheless, it quite simply reduced the amount of players using sprays. And for the few people that did continue to use sprays after this point, it was no longer Valve's problem since you as a player must enable that setting to see them in the first place. But what does any of this actually have to do with custom decals? Well, I just wanted to show that when you give players the freedom to share images in game, people are most certainly going to abuse it and share some potentially unsavory material, which can only get worse when these offenders aren't being properly punished for doing so. And honestly, I feel like some of the issues that sprays have are also pretty prevalent for decals, which to me is enough of a reason to bring attention to it before things get even worse. So enough dancing around the matter. What is actually so bad about custom decals? The first and honestly most important problem with decals is the non-existent moderation that is supposed to be done on them. As much as there is a full-on confirmation that the decal you're applying is compliant with the Steam subscriber agreement, as well as explicitly claiming that uploading what is deemed offensive content will likely result in the removal of the decal as well as potentially the item itself. Let's not even try to beat around the bush here. I have not once heard of anyone actually receiving any sort of punishment for using offensive content in their decals and I imagine that most of you can say the exact same thing. Maybe this kind of thing was enforced to some degree back in the feature's infancy, but nearly 12 years later, it's pretty obvious that Valve has stopped any supposed attempt to actually moderate a system like this. And because of this, there is an insane amount of decaled items out there that have content that either goes against the Steam subscriber agreement and or the ESRB rating of the game. Now, for obvious reasons, I cannot show examples of this offending content, but I will make note of the fact that places like backpack.tf show the applied decals on items, as well as there being a dedicated Twitter account displaying all kinds of decals people have. But I will warn you again that these places do have adult content within them, so please proceed with caution when viewing them. But the point I'm trying to make is that there are a ton of items with decals that simply should not exist. But due to Valve's sheer incompetence, this problem gets pushed onto us. And I feel like this is the most obvious when you see just how much decals interact with other features within TF2. First and foremost is the freeze cam. As we're all aware, when you are killed by another player, the camera zooms in on who landed that final blow. This by itself is mostly harmless, and frankly it can make for some really goddamn funny moments. <laughs> But once we introduce custom decals, you'll realize a glaring issue. If you just so happen to be killed by the sign, you are basically forced to see the contents of it. That means you're at mercy of whatever that person is fine having on their objector. And without active moderation, that is a very worrisome thing. And it's not like that is the only way you may end up being flashed by explicit decals. You could always see them lying around when you're spectating other players, as well as when someone is simply standing in your view holding their sign out. But those are just the intended ways of seeing decals. There is also another means of viewing them that is very much unintentional. For some reason, if you have a sign equipped while another person does, when you go to inspect your sign, there is a good chance it will change to their decal, leading to moments of shock and confusion when your sign ain't exactly yours anymore. Which, by the way, is why my sign has changed so much throughout this video. Believe it or not, they have all been my own signs, just with other people's decals getting thrown onto them. As for why this happens is completely beyond me. But I can say without a doubt, it has shocked me more times than I can count. And when you compare this to something like sprays, which were static and could be potentially avoidable, you realize just how bad custom decals can really be. It is utterly insane that you can be put into situations where you're basically forced to see explicit signs. And because of that, I am fearful of streaming in casual servers because God knows that someone's gonna walk up to me with a disgusting sign and get me banned. But then again, I don't think streaming are the biggest victims when it comes to custom decals.
you see a lot of miners play TF2 regularly. Now, if you're living under a rock, that may be shocking to you. And if you feel that way, let me just ask you something. When did you start playing TF2? Personally, I started when I was 14. And odds are, most people starting nowadays are around that age. Because of that, I feel it's utterly horrible that they may be subjected to what is clearly unsuitable content because of incompetence on Valve's end. But I can already hear some of you thinking, Erm, TF2 is rated M for mature, so kids shouldn't be playing the game anyway. And in a perfect world, yes, that would be true. But as I already said, a lot of people simply do not abide by that rating and play anyway. And I know that ESRB ratings are a bit hard to argue with, given that online content is not typically rated, but this isn't just about swears and slurs anymore. This is about the mountains of explicit imagery that have certainly ended up on the screens of minors playing the game. Simply put, this is something that we should not be tolerating, regardless of the game's rating. So, how do we solve this giant problem affecting a majority of players? Well, like just about every problem TF2 has, there are mods out there that can essentially disable custom decals for you. But also like every other problem, the solution should not be to just use a mod, especially when mods like this wouldn't even work in official servers anyway. It is simply not practical for every single player wanting to remove custom decals. I want to be able to play anywhere in TF2 without the concern of being exposed to offensive or NSFW content, and I feel like that will only happen if one of two things change within the game. Number one, Valve could actually moderate their decal system again, which in all fairness, I don't expect out of the company. They have way too little people to get someone to enforce this specific system, let alone to keep the item servers up. But nonetheless, it would be the most ideal way to clean up custom decals. But there is also a much more simple option if they cannot moderate them properly. Number two, give custom decals the spray treatment, i.e. disable them for the player by default. This I feel like gives players the best of both worlds. It allows underage players as well as anyone else to avoid seeing decals if they don't want to, while allowing the rest of the community to continue viewing them if they do. Though if this is what happens, I hope they at least give a warning that enabling decals may include 18 plus content. This seems fair if they're not going to actually enforce the system anyway. And listen, giving people a heads up is a lot better than what we have right now. But even then, these are just some suggestions. Who knows? knows what Valve will actually do about custom decals and or if they do anything at all. Either way, time will tell. And given Valve's track record, I just hope it's sooner rather than never at all.